All right, I finally get to do a video I've been waiting to do for years on this channel. And it has to do with these 1 14th scale uh, electric forklifts made by Carson Model Sport. Uh, years ago, I actually came up with the concept of doing a show called Loading Wars. It wasn't a show at that time. It was just kind of like an episode of two of uh, my buddy Everett and I competing against each other with two of these forklifts, seeing who could load a trailer fast uh, and who could do it with the least amount of penalty points acquired. Well this show we actually kept this going recently on the second channel I have called RC Sparks Reboot uh, and Loading Wars is going strong and we've had tons of competitors come over to the shop. If you haven't checked it out you definitely need to go over there and uh, subscribe if you want to be a part of that. But I digress. I want to talk about uh, this model right here. From Carson Model Sport the 114 scale uh, forklift is very capable. Um, the one thing I really like about this is that the mast is able to move forward and backward. You're able to move the boom forward and backward with the forks. Now the forks don't slide side to side on the slide plate um, but of course you do have the lift as well. Um, so you can adjust these manually if you need to but that's not why I'm here today. Today I'm here to talk about um, the power. You'll notice I have a small lithium polymer battery over here from Gen Zace. This is a 3800 square pack I picked out on their website. I'll leave a link in the video description box down below. But 7.4 volts plus uh, 3800 milliamp hours, that's a ton of runtime. This little machine actually is like toy grade. I would say it's hobby grade, but it's sold as a toy overseas from what I understand. Uh, and if you check it out on the bottom, it takes five AA batteries. Now these batteries are actually 1.5 volts each, which means uh, three, six, and then another uh, 7.5 volts altogether. This is a 7.4 volt battery, the lithium polymer. So this is going to give me a constant voltage discharge. Uh, when this one, these batteries are awesome and they run a really long time, but as they run, they start to lose power. If you think of a flashlight when you click it on, you know, it starts really bright and then over time it kind of fades where a LiPo battery actually gives you that constant power all the time until it's done. Now this little model doesn't have a voltage monitor because you got to be careful with lipos. If you run them too low, they can become dangerous and unstable and you can ruin the battery. So you don't want to risk that. But with 3800 milliamp hours, that's going to give you a ton of run time. Um, so I'm not going to worry about running out. This will have constant power. But the problem is, is I have to modify this to get it in which means I gotta somehow cut this out and get rid of that whole battery pack. Now don't worry, I don't usually do tutorials where I haven't done this before, and indeed I have done it before, but these models are slowly changing over time. I've noticed small uh, changes in how they make it, so hopefully I can still do it. One of the things I know is in the last model, my steering servo, the stock one, kinda goes all buggy when you put in these um, LiPos, so I did switch off my other one to a Mini from Saturday. I'm going to do that again today. Cross my fingers. Hopefully this works. Hopefully this helps everybody out there that wants to do loading wars and uh, check it out right now. Uh, we're going to get started. So this model is very cool when you actually look at it in detail. This gearbox that's right up here is actually what controls the lift mechanism going up and down for the forks. Now I won't be messing around with this today, but we will be seeing more of this gearbox on the show in the future because I also want to get into upgrading that. Uh, but to get into the internals of what we're looking at, there's going to be a screw on either side, so on the floor plate here and on the other side, and then we have one right back here. So many people that watch Loading Wars are always like, you should weight this down, you know, you'll get better steering and traction, uh, but they don't know that we actually do have these weighted down. The reason why they have kind of iffy steering is because this is a solid front drive axle. There is no differential to give it any kind of limited slip when it's under load trying to turn. So we get more of like a pushing, um, but that's that's not a big deal. You'll also notice today that when we're looking at the uh, the steering um, that the new servo will give us better proportional steering control. Can go ahead and take out these batteries. 
And this is not a tray that I can take out, it's just a cast mold that's a part of the bottom of the tub chassis. I'm go ahead and remove that back screw, it's just a small Phillips. Now I'm going to remove those floor pan screws. And then you want to be careful when you're lifting it up kind of because it, it kind of lifts up and slides out. Like that. All right, so depending on the model of forklift you have, which I mean the age of the forklift, because they have changed it over time, the older models will actually have a, a receiver on the inside, quite a large receiver that they were using for their uh, radios. This one actually has it incorporated right onto the controller board. So this is your electronic speed control, this is your antenna, uh, as well as uh, your controllers for the uh, forks and mast and steering. So everything comes together on this main control board. I'm going to be cutting out all of these spars right here and then I'm going to be doing a vertical cut all the way along the inside and trying to remove just the base plate without cutting into those two mounting screws that are right on the edge. So good luck to me. flathead screwdriver to see if I did any super damage that I didn't want to do. Trying to get these pieces out of the way carefully. Destruction! But success! So the two supporting screws on either side are 100% fine. Have a look on the inside, let me focus it for you. So there, so I'm going to go in and smooth out the edges, obviously, but the lipo is going to be able to sit in here just fine. I am going to put a piece of tape over this, uh, just to make sure that I can have some reflective tape over the motor, not to give out any heat issues. Uh, but now that I have this taken out, look at this perfect 3800 battery. Ta-da! Just got to get the, let me just see here. I'm going to have to put the cable on this side, but then 100% fits in there. I'm going to be able to put that battery case uh, cover on right here. Well, if I had it in there perfect, you'd have heard that snap on there, but there you go. So I lifted the control board out of the way and then for me to get to the servo I have another two screws, one here and one there. Okay, I just figured out something totally crazy which is going to stop me from uh, installing the Savox servo. Number one, I noticed this is new. They have actually weighted down uh, the steering itself, so that's very cool to notice. Not very much weight, but at least it gives it some. But secondly, this is no longer the regular servo that they used to offer. This is actually like a five pin servo right here. This is the port. And so now I can't change the servo out. So when they removed the ability to have the RX in there and to change the radio out, the receiver, and integrated it into this board, we can no longer change the servo. But, okay, so that's disappointing, but if it says 7.5 volts on the board, does that mean this servo can now take the LiPo power? I wonder. Um, so this could be a complete bust. Here I thought I was doing this awesome upgrade of servo and to get like better proportionate, ser uh, better proportionate steering, but they've limited me by making this one board. Let's cross our fingers and hope the LiPo upgrade works. I'm going to put this back together right now. We're going to solder on a post for the battery and we're going to try it. 
So quite literally, here is a handy little kit of uh, heat soldering connections or uh, different types of shrink butt connectors. <laughs> uh, this here is like a heat activated uh, soldering or soldering point, however you guys pronounce it, wherever you're from. Uh, basically you put two wires on the inside, heat it up, and it joins them together. So that's exactly what I'm going to do for uh, these power wires. I just slide them on the wire first. I twisted the uh, wire to make sure that I didn't have any kind of threads or anything getting stuck. And then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of reverse fish the wire back through the hole. So we have two of uh, the wires touching each other right on the inside. And then a quick lighter heats it up the solder melts it and shrinks it and it's just that easy done that is my new connector all right so either this worked or i frigged up a very expensive small forklift hopefully not though um yeah let's see if what can happen here small separator for the motor not really necessary it's not going to create any heat but this why not I'm going to go ahead and put this in, plug it in first, everything's turned on. Yeah, I didn't see the wheels click off to the side. Do they work? No! What's wrong? Let me try that again. Do they work? Oh no, what's going on? Okay, let's see if I had to turn the switches off. Come on, work with me. Oh yeah, 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 yeah! I just had to do the switches. Oh, listen to the speed. <laughs> yeah! Oh man, I thought I frigged that up for sure. Like I said, I did this before, but with them switching the model around, now I can't change the radio or the servo. At least I might be able to get some lipo power in there. Does it fit? It does. Look at this. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, I lost power? Nope. Nice. Okay, so. Steering is rather, it is proportional, but it could be better, but regardless. So all that work for longer run time. I was really kind of hoping for a better servo, um, but regardless, if I've got longer run time, then it's worth it. You guys will be asking me about lifting power. Did it increase the lifting power? But that gearbox actually works on a plastic expandable uh, clutch system. Well, regardless, this is going to totally help with runtime anyway and constant power. There it is, guys. A two cell lipo conversion that is successful. Smash that like button right now uh, and uh, leave a comment because that was a huge risk. I'm glad it worked. Hopefully, you guys, uh, if you're into the Carson forklifts at all, you can take advantage of this Gen Zace uh, 3800 milliamp hour two cell. It fits in there perfectly. Uh, it's, 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 it's going to give me tons of runtime, and that's exactly what I'm after. I wish I could say switching over to a lipo battery battery in this case is going to make it faster but if you actually do the math on those uh, little double A's 7.5 volts compared to 7.4 volts yes it's going to be a small down step in power uh, but in double the runtime and constant power output so that is a big thumbs up for me uh, I could overcharge the lipo a little bit I never suggest doing that but a trained eye can certainly do that get 8.26 or whatever uh, you want out but you're always running a risk when you're running a, a main board like this one has and you're messing around with voltages so 7.5 is what it's rated for I'm 
sure it can take eight, but use at your own risk. As soon as you release the magic genie smoke from the board, you know as well as I do, you're not gonna be playing with it until you replace it. So big changes on the Carson model. I know now we can't change the servo. You could on the old ones. That's a bit of a bummer because these are the same price uh, as the old ones, but we know that this servo didn't wig out when it took the LiPo like my old one did. So win, 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 lose. Let me know in the comments section. We'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures. And if you haven't gone over to RC Sparks Reboot to check out forklift fights and loading wars, you're losing out. Go over there. We'll see you over and, uh, and uh, out, I guess, from me. Bye.